Can you guys believe we're up to week seven already? Where has time gone? Isn't it nuts? Your course is almost over. How do you feel about that? I mean, you've already done one final project. You're almost up to the second here. Thomas says, I'm good. My brain hurts, says Monika. I hear ya. <laughs> there, we cover a lot of turf in this class. Yeah, yeah, awesome. How many of you have started on final project two? Just so I'm keeping an eye on the chat here. Oh, business law, Monika, yeah, oh my gosh. Yay, good, we've got some starters, okay. Just some research, about halfway there. Oh, Steph, I'm so glad you said the learning community has been great, I'm so glad. Are you following the steps that I'm putting up in there, Steph? Perfect, Thomas, you're in the right place for questions. Curious ways to the webinar, I hear you. That's why we're here, as Felina says, that's so true. Yeah, awesome. Good. I'm so glad. Learning community is amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. Good. Shalia's in there too. Yay. I'm not alone in there. Okay. Perfect. Let's get started then on this assignment. I'm going to go ahead and jump over and share my screen with you all. <laughs> all right. Let me get sharing. And then um, let me pop that back up, and then I'm going to move my monitor. And like I always say, I um, am not just looking off to the side. It's that I have multiple monitors going, so I can keep track of you guys. Um, I'm so glad you like the outline and the learning community, Monika. That's awesome. Okay, so for this final project, let's scroll down. It's right here, 7-3, final project 2. Um, this is your last big final project, so just as a heads up, you're not going to have a big project due in week eight, and that's intentional. Um, we know you're limping along by week eight, and your instructors need to get their final grades in, so putting a big final project in week eight is um, really not the greatest thing. So as a result, Melina did a great job in designing this course and putting it in week seven. So continuing this scenario from your product overview, report your findings and recommendations to the stakeholders of your company. One thing we've learned in this course, hopefully, is that your audience is extremely important, your target demographic. And so right out of the gate, Melina has given us who our target demographic is. Remember, you're presenting to the stakeholders of your company. Your job is to help the company launch a new pet food line. And I'm hoping by week seven that isn't a surprise to anyone. Hopefully we know what we've been talking about for the last few weeks. Um, the food line will be for both cats and dogs. That's a key point. And the company is excited because the product is made of all natural ingredients. You will need to make some strategic recommendations about how to launch and promote this new product line. Create a presentation to share your recommendations with the stakeholders within your company. So what the way I like to set this up for you guys is the PowerPoint you're going to be completing. Imagine that you're up there and you are giving a presentation to your stakeholders, um, just like you would in a real world setting. And that's how you want to build this assignment. So first things first, I want to show you, we've got a great exemplar here, which did anyone use the exemplar for um, Final Project 1, just out of curiosity? Yeah, was that really helpful? Yes, lots of yeses. I love this. Okay, yeah, so great news. Melina did another, um, when she built the course, she put in an exemplar for this assignment too. And I think those are so helpful because then if you have any questions, you can kind of see, hmm, how would this look like in another location or with another scenario, which is really kind of cool. So let's start off with your presentation title slide. Um, first of all, you know you have your template here, you've got your exemplar here. If for any reason you need that template, you can come over to the learning community and get it under files as well. It's not just here in your course um, in case anyone's looking for it. So you're just gonna start off your presentation with your presentation title. This can be anything you want it to be. You can be really creative about it or you can, you know, be more simplistic about it based on the RAM or the specifications of the assignment. Um, your name, obviously, and then you don't have to change Marketing 113 or Final Project 2. Does anybody have any questions about that? Hopefully we're all good. Kristen says no. Good, good. No, nope, nope. Good so far. Okay, great. We are tracking. Perfect. The company and product overview slide. So this slide should include a brief overview of the pets the pet supply store rather, and its new product. So this is where you're just painting with broad strokes, you're setting the stage for the product that you're about to launch. Um, you're gonna tell a little bit about the store first of all, a little bit about the product. So imagine you're in that boardroom again and you're presenting. What would this look like? Let's go look at how they did it for Tip Top Bakery. 
What do we know about Tip Top Bakery? First of all, they're a high-end bakery that serves made-to-order breakfast and lunch items. They have five locations. They're launching pre-packaged to-go sandwiches, and they're focused on selling locally sourced meats and produce. So this gives you a little bit about the company, what they're trying to bring to market, and how they're going to do it. A key thing to point out here is down below, do you see this note section? And we've referenced this before in these PowerPoints, but it's really important for this final project uh, too that you include down here the specifics of what you're delineating up here. So just as is the case with bullet points, they're just meant to prompt you and let the um, observer know where you're pegging and what direction you're going. But to really put the meat on the bone, so to speak, of this, you want to go down into your notes section, and this is almost like the essay portion. You don't have to use full paragraphs at all, but this is where you really get to show your instructor you know what you're talking about and really paint the full picture for them, if that makes sense. So up here, it's kind of like drawing the outline of an image, and here down below in the notes section, you're actually filling it in and providing all the details. Um, so that's a little bit about Tip Top Bakery. So over here, we're going to do the same thing for SNU Pet Supply and then also for the new product. This, you're not going to find all this information in one specific location. This is going to be what you've garnered over the last seven weeks in our course. Like things like we know that this pet food is going to cost 10% more than the average, right? Um, and feel free too to fill in the gaps. If you feel like there's something in here that should be included, but the course didn't specifically say something about that, feel free to fill in the gaps um, and make it up. That's one thing we've talked about is, you know, the art of being a good marketer is that it's a science, but it's also an art form. And so you get to fill in those gaps. Um, this is about the, both the company and the product. Yes, we can absolutely cover saving as a PDF with a notes page. Totally. I'm glad you said that, Melina. Yeah, and we will absolutely cover that at the end. Once we get through all this, I'll show you how to save it as a PDF with notes. That way, when you submit it to the Writing Center, you know exactly um, how to do that because they do require that. They don't accept PowerPoint. Does that help everybody? Okay, good. Yeah, so right here, you're giving an overview. It, the important thing here I want to focus on is that you're talking about both the pet store itself and the new product. Make sure you address both of those things on this slide. And the top of the slide gives it, reminds you to, company and product overview slide. That's really important um, right out of the gate. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, perfect. And I want to show you something really, too, before we move on to slide three that I put in the learning community. Your instructor may be putting this in the course. This was really brilliant. This was designed by our Bill Gogoda. And it's so cool because what it does is it actually walks you through the final project and like what you need to include introduce your company if this is too small you can know that you can always download it and then zoom in um, that's another great way to do it in fact I may just snag it a minute over here let me go grab it I believe uh, da -da -da -da. I may have to go snag it off my desktop hang on one second this might get kind of messy or forewarned. <laughs> I've got a lot going on on my desktop on any given day. Um, let's see. There we go. That way you all can see it hopefully a little bit bigger. There we go. That's a little bit bigger. Does that help everybody? Can you all see that? Yeah. Melina says, yes, we can see. Okay, perfect. So yeah, know that if you come into the learning community, this will go through each slide as well and walk you through it and let you know what's new. The big thing about this project is that there aren't a ton of new things. This is like final project one and that you have done a lot of the work. Um, it's just pulling together everything you already know. Even the topic matter is the same, right? We're talking about bringing a new pet food to market. Does that make sense to everyone? We're not asking you to reinvent the wheel on this. Yeah. Awesome, and you could download it. Perfect, good, good, good. Okay, so coming back to slide number two about the company and the product overview, do we have any questions about that or does that make sense to everyone? You're just setting the landscape, so to speak. You're setting the stage. Okay, good, we've got that one. Okay, everybody else got that? I just wanna make sure before we move on. There's usually, everybody kind of has one to two slides that they're like stuck on. Um, great question, Shalia. I usually say three to five bullets. I think that Melina answered that above with three to five as well. Let me make sure. 
Um, but I think that's kind of what we're looking for. Yep, three to five bullets. Perfect, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Lisa, great question. What are we supposed to say in the notes and are we supposed to say something for every slide? You definitely wanna include a notes um, in on this assignment. Your instructor is gonna be looking for notes. You're gonna be graded on notes for this assignment. Um, so don't leave the notes area blank. To get to it, all you have to do is click down here and you can type away. The best way I can describe notes is like these are the actual words you'd be saying in a presentation, whereas the bullet points themselves are just the prompts and give the overview. Um, so if we look up here, let's go back to our exemplar again. Notice that these are the bullet points. It's a high-end bakery. They have five locations. They're launching prepackaged to go. But down here, it really explains. It says the Tip Top Bakery has been successful in cultivating a made-to-order breakfast and lunch business in five locations. In reviewing areas that the bakery can expand without additional locations, market research revealed that offering pre-made-to-go lunch options is a place for expansion. You see where when I'm reading that, that's like something I would actually say if I were presenting to a group of executives like or a group of stakeholders or shareholders like we are in this case, um, as opposed to I wouldn't just get up there and read them these bullet points. This is actually more what I would actually be saying to them. That's Does that kind of explain, Lisa? Okay, good. Yep, awesome. Yeah, okay, great. Good, we are all on the same page. Let's move on. Okay, marketing strategy slides. So from part one, what marketing strategies are you recommending the pet supply company use to promote its new product? Discuss the channels you plan to use and the messaging. So this should be pretty familiar to you. You're thinking marketing strategies as far as this um, new product. And then what channels are you gonna use to meet those strategies? This sounds a lot like final project one. And let's see how they did it over at our exemplar. So if we look at that, What's really cool, and you're welcome to steal these graphics. I'll show you how in just a minute. But Tip Top Bakery proposed marketing strategies. They're going to use Facebook. And they're going to use in-store. Now, what type of Facebook promotions are they going to use? Well, they're going to use coupons and contests to increase page likes and engagement. They're going to promote daily specials and deals through frequent posts, and they're going to cross-post content on daily specials on Instagram. Then for their in-store promotions, these are some ideas of what they're going to do. Backing out of this example for a minute, let's come back to um, our Snoop Pet Supply. What are some specific marketing strategies and channels that you would use or that you um, used in Final Project 1 that you think really apply to launching this product? Anybody have any ideas? In store and online, perfect. Yep. Where online specifically, Melora? their website their web page yep yeah a paid search that's a great idea too email okay your target is older so you chose newspaper ads Matt, smart as long as you can substantiate why you chose what you chose it's totally a great way to do it yep and that's the thing too there isn't a right or wrong for this as long as you can explain why you chose what you did so if you chose newspaper ads that's awesome just make sure you can explain why you chose newspaper ads yep lisa interesting question about public relations would that be a strategy such as hosting pet adoption fairs um, i would go back and look at the channels specifically um, and what our viable channels are that might be an in-store promotion i know that like um it's pet smart does saturday promotions um, or Saturday pet adoptions. And so if there's a way to tie into that, perhaps there's a way to do that. Um, yes, you do not have to use what you've already used in your previous papers or in your last final project, but you're welcome to do so. And this is a chance for you again to take your instructor's feedback and really weave that in and then make a superior product. Um, what you've done in the past that's gotten you a great grade is awesome. This is a truly polished submission. So what I would say to you is really incorporate what your instructor has told you in the past and also what you've learned. You're welcome to use the work you've already done in the course, but take it up a notch. That's what your instructors are looking for, and we're going to see that in the rubric too. Does that help everyone? Yeah, I mean, the reason why it's called a final project is really because this is your chance to show, hey, this is all the information I've learned over the last seven weeks. 
I've really polished it, I've really honed it, and this is what I have to show for it. Um, so while it may have been good enough to get a good grade on a specific milestone assignment, your final project, your instructors are looking for something a little more razzle-dazzle, so to speak, in the world of marketing. They're looking for something that has um, that polished and completed look of everything that you've learned. And that's how come the notes section is required for your final project. Yeah. Good. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? I want to make sure that we're getting you guys everything you need. Yeah, and the PowerPoint is a different medium for sure, too, than what we've done on the others. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Great. Okay. All right, let's take a look then at our next slide. Oh, and I promised you I would show you how to use these graphics. So, while you can't use the content from Tip Top Bakery, because that would be plagiarism, of course, you're welcome to highlight these, and then you can just write it. Click. We'll see if it'll let me do it. There it will, and you can hit copy, or you can do control C, if you're a control C person. You can hit copy, and let's say I wanted to paste that into my actual slide, and I'm gonna delete out my text box. And to do that, you just highlight your text box and hit delete. And then right over here, you can right click, and you can hit paste, and there it is. So let's say I wanted to focus on, yes, in-store promotion. Let's, I would just back this up and say in, store promotions and then you can adapt it to fit your needs does that make sense to everyone how to do that please don't feel like you have to incorporate images you're not going to lose points if you don't incorporate them you're not going to gain points if you do um, if you're like it's just enough for me to get the content down on this <laughs> we totally understand and that's like on the rubric doesn't reflect your ability to use powerpoint we're looking for substance here um, so don't feel like you have to use those um, images. If you do want to use them and it makes it easier for you, you are welcome to do so. Um, not a problem either way. Yes. Yes, Melina is spot on. Yes, we say jazz it up, razzle dazzle. Really, you're looking for content and really refining your content. That's the key. Yep. Great question. Okay, so if we use social media instead of Feedbook, Thomas, you could say social media and then um, delineate specifically how you're going to use Facebook, how you're going to use Instagram, how you're going to use each of those social media um, or the ones that you want to use, Thomas. Does that kind of help answer that question? That's what you did. Okay, outstanding. Good. Then we're all on the right same page. Okay, the fourth side is about social responsibility. And you're going to go, we haven't had that in a milestone. You're right, but you have had it in a discussion. So what does social responsibility mean to the company? Why is social responsibility important? And why would your department marketing be interested in it? This slide is really important. You have three key things to discuss on this slide and make sure you don't skimp on any one of them. So let's just start out with the first one. What does social responsibility mean to a company? What, why do you think Snoo Pet Supply would be interested in social responsibility. Does anyone want to throw it out there? I see no typers. <laughs> Emily's going to be brave. There we go. Why would Snoo Pet Supply care about social responsibility? Taxes. Yeah, that's a good one, Bailey. That's so honest. Absolutely. Smart businesses, Matt. Okay, why is it smart business, Matt? I don't disagree. I think you're right. I want to dive in deeper. Um, it can save us money to be more sustainable. Yeah, it can. Draw customers that have similar concerns, said Jan. Nice. Yep. Yep. All of these are good. Creating good customer relationships. Absolutely. Social responsibility has become a really huge thing. And there's a number of companies, in fact, some of the best companies out there are doing it. Because this is kind of a tr trick question in some ways. But number, our bullet point number one here really ties into bullet point number three. So why do you think a marketing department would be interested in social responsibility? Branding. Yep, spot on, Matt. Yep. New customers, absolutely. And it shows that we care, right? Because right now, big business is out and local business is in. And even if you are a big business, we want to see that you're investing in the local community where you're taking dollars out of the pockets of the people who live there. So even big companies like Lowe's who build playgrounds in local neighborhoods, we happen to have one here where I live, 
um, or companies like Target who pay their employees to do good things within the community on the company's dollar to show that they're socially responsible. Um, it really helps build the brand. Um, by the same token, some organizations that aren't seen as socially responsible, such as Walmart, have a lot of problems in their public relations division, right? Um, and in their marketing department. They, that is something they have worked over and over to overcome um, is being seen as socially responsible instead of being seen as the big, bad, big box retailer. Um, what are some other reasons why you think a marketing department would be interested in it? Yes, Carrie, now Walmart does pay organizations that you volunteer for. They have really turned this around. They've been peer pressured in a very positive way by Target to do so. Um, which is neat to see, but social responsibility is pretty important. Yeah, donating to shelters, absolutely. Kristen, that would be a great one to say for every, um, you know, bag of pet food or jar of pet food that we sell, we're going to give a dollar to a local shelter. Um, that's a huge, huge way to be seen as socially responsible. Yes, Angela, yep, yeah. Walmart has been very much peer pressured into doing the socially, environmentally sustainable, but also socially responsible thing to do. I think what's important is we hear social responsibility and we think of all the environmental aspects of this, and that's definitely a part of it. But social responsibility is about more than that. Can anyone kind of explain what else it's about? Supporting the community, Rosalie, that's spot on. Yes. Yes, Anthony, separate the business from the for-profit stigma. Absolutely, Carissa, you're spot on, humanizing the company, all of that. Yes, that's exactly what social responsibility is about. And someone asked too, do we leave the power, do we leave the questions in our PowerPoint? You do not wanna leave the questions in your PowerPoint. What I typically like to do is I'll leave them up there, at least this is what I do that I think is really helpful, is leave the question up there, I'll type in my response, and then I'll go down and then I'll type in my response and make sure that I really answered the question before I take the question out. So once I put in my response, I go back and I read and then verify that my response matches the question and then I delete it out just to make sure I got all three questions. Because typically what happens on this slide is students forget one of the questions or both of the questions because you get so busy answering this first question, you forget to come down here and in an effort to answer the first question, you just delete this and then you start typing away and then before you know it, you forgot there were two more questions there. So does that tip kind of help everybody? Okay. Yeah, whenever there's multiple bullet points, that's kind of how I like to approach it and then clean up your formatting once you get everything answered. Okay, good. Let me go ahead and do this. Any other questions about social responsibility this slide specifically? Yeah, William, great question. Like the meat of answering these questions is done in the notes section. The bullet points are just kind of the broad scope. So I like to think of your bullet points as being your 30,000 you know, foot perspective, and then you're gonna drill down to that 10,000 foot perspective in your notes section. Yeah, no worries, Monika, that's why we're here. If you think you did it wrong, you're coming to the right place because um, you still have time to totally straighten it out. Okay, perfect. Any other questions on this slide? Angela, yes, we can show an example. Let's pop back over to our exemplar and take a look. So, Tip Top Bakery, social responsibility policy. Tip Top Bakery is committed to being a socially responsible company. We feel it is our duty to give back to the communities in which we work. Just what you guys discussed, that's why I'm smiling because you guys already got this. Um, to demonstrate our commitment, we implemented recycling of all items that can be recycled, sourcing meat and produce locally as possible, donating perishable food at the close of the day to local soup kitchens. That's a great idea, right? And I mean, how easily could we replicate that with Snoop Pet Supply? We could donate all the close to expiration food to a local um, animal shelter, right? We recently began to promote our social responsibility policy and encourage our customers to participate through recycling and donations. So those are all things that Tip Top Bakery is doing. And think about, hopefully that kind of gets those creative juices flowing and, and prompts some ideas for you on all the things that Snoo Pet Supply um, could do. Does that help in, with the example, Angelina? Does that explain it a little more? Good, okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Matt, spay and neuter programs. I don't know, you all may be so young you don't remember Bob Barker and his have your pet spay or neutered at the end of every single price is right. Okay, Chris, I'm glad to know I'm not alone in remembering that. 
<laughs> that was such a great brand, right? That was such a great way to brand it. Uh, yes. Oh, good. I'm so glad to know. You know, good question, Angelina. How long do we need to have our notes be? Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, William. <laughs> Um, how long do we, you need to have your note section be? You can see that these are not like entire full paragraphs. This isn't an essay. These are a few key sentences that really take your thought and allow you to fully flesh it out. Um, so don't feel like you have to write something that's scrollable. You'll see this note section down here isn't scrollable. Um, it's more just about making sure that you've fully explained your ideas. And the whole goal here is to improve to your, or to prove to your instructor rather that um, you know what you're talking about. And so just whatever you would need to show that is what you need to share here. So like, yeah, I mean, they give some specifics. Like if we look at this last one, we recently began to promote our social responsibility policy and encourage our customers to participate through recycling and donations. Look at how they flesh that out in the notes section. In addition, the company makes daily donations. So we know now it's daily. They're not just blindly donating, right? Um, over the holiday season, we offered customers the opportunity to donate $1 to their order and raised over $10,000 to help the hungry in our communities. So um, you can see that that's how, I mean, this is an idea. Your bullet point's an idea, but the notes section is how it actually got done or how much money they raised. Or you see how that actually puts meat on the bones of the idea that was shared up here in the um, PowerPoint portion. Yeah, Carissa, great. You can make it up. So if that has not been provided to you, you are welcome to do so. Yep, absolutely. And that's where we say, like, um, you are welcome to fill in any of the gaps or anything you or any things you think, rather, that's a mouthful, um, need to be filled in when it comes to um, fully bringing this to light or fully filling in the gaps of what you want to share. Yeah, your instructor is going to go, not going to say to you, oh, that wasn't shared in the, you know, textbook, you're losing points for that, or that wasn't shared in our readings, you're losing points for that. Um, like if you were to say, you know, we donated $1, if you were to do something similar or, or fill in numbers like that. Is that what you're saying, Carissa? Yes, Shalia, it is a little weird. I get that. <laughs> this is really about you using your imagination and using all the skills you've been given over the last seven weeks. Um, so don't, I mean, you're really taking this case study and it's not, don't worry, you're not lying. You're taking this case study and you're actually making it come to life by the ways that you want to implement social responsibility and the ways that you think would be best um, when it comes to using these channels to re reach your target demographic. Um, this is about you really putting meat on the bones of it. I know I say that a lot, but that's really what this is. Yeah. Yep, as Melina said, we built the project with deliberate gaps. This is your chance to fill it in. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we want to hear your ideas. We want to hear your ideas. Okay, other questions on this slide specifically, on slide number four, when it comes to social responsibility. <laughs> no worry, Melina. We don't have spell check going in the chat. It's all good. <laughs> yes, Thomas, this is important. You are drilling down, um, it, you're referring to the social responsibility. Do we focus on the product or just on the company? Yes, you can do both. Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Um, you can do both when it comes to social responsibility. So how are you using this product to be socially responsible? And that's what I was saying. Like maybe you use a dollar from every bag sold to donate to a local shelter. Or you could say the company overall is socially responsible because we take a dollar off of every single um, or every single time we sell pet food to a client if they bring in their own packaging. So if you bring in your own jar, we'll weigh it and then we'll take a dollar off. Um, there's ways, do you see what I'm saying? You can do either one as long as you're proving that you're socially responsible. Yeah, you can touch on one or both. All of the above, the key here is just to show that social responsibility is being exhibited in some capacity, either by the company or by um, their use or their sale of this product. Yeah, you don't have to split hairs about that. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's so cool, Melora. Yeah, so all of those are like great ideas. Like I know there's some really high-end pet food stores like in Malibu or 
they actually sell like it is truly raw pet food that comes in a refrigerator and you bring in your container and you they zero it out on their scale and then they put the food into the container and you just pay for the part you actually um, purchase. So some people may come in with a small little container. Some people may come in with a ginormous container. If you have a Great Dane, I suppose that even a big container, you can go through that in one week. Um, but that way you aren't paying for the weight of the product um, or the weight of your container, but you are getting credit for bringing one in. Yeah. So how many should you have? You know, for these, I would go with, use Tip Top again as your guide. There's three main bullet points. There's some supporting evidence down here. Um, I think that's a good way to do it. I think for all of your slides, you want a minimum of three up to five, six. This one happens to have six bullet points on it. Um, you start using more than six, and I'm as an instructor, I would probably say, well, is there some overlap here? And could you have used the notes section to further explain your ideas? Because it's just going to get really congested on a PowerPoint. So imagine you're presenting to someone. If there's more than six bullet points, their eyes kind of start to cross. It's like, wait, where are we? Which bullet point are we on, right? If there's less than three, it start, kind of starts looking like the slide wasn't really filled out. Um, so that's kind of a nice way to gauge and say, does it adequately fit? And that's where you can balance it with your notes section. Yeah. Does that help? Roger, Roger. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Moving on to slide number five. So for slide number five, let me toggle down here. This should seem very familiar to you all the way back in... Um, Week two, when you were terrified taking this class, and now you're going to read this, and you're going to go, ah, I've got this, right? Um, so your internal market factor slide. This is how will the internal market factors impact the marketing strategies you are suggesting? Internal, key words there, and that's why they're in bold. Utilizing the SWOT analysis you completed in the market factors section, elaborate on the strengths and weaknesses that this company should consider and why, which are most important and why. So here we have three big questions. Once again, I would tell you, Start typing and fill in your questions and then go back and verify that you answered the question and then delete the question out of your slide because you've got three separate thoughts here. They are interwoven, but you need to make sure you address all three in order to give full credit. So how will the internal market factors impact the marketing strategies you are suggesting? And then let's go look at Tip Top Bakery and see how they did it for this one. Aha, look at these handy dandy graphics you're welcome to steal. Once again, you're not... Um, you can't steal the content of them because <laughs> that's plagiarizing, but you're welcome to use the boxes. Sometimes that is a really um, nice and helpful thing, and then you can change the content for strengths and weaknesses. If you do not want to use those, if you're not comfortable using those, you can come back over here, and you can literally type out strengths and then weaknesses. And you are welcome then to put in your sub points here. Um, so in thinking about this, what are some strengths and weaknesses that you see impacting the marketing strategies that you have chosen for your product? Does, let's just start with strengths. Anybody want to throw some out there? Yep. Yep. All natural. Love it. Okay. High quality ingredients. Licensed. Okay. Yep. Think about these. Remember, the key word here is internal. So this is about your organization specifically. Grain-free, freshness guaranteed. Okay, yes. Let's take a look at this in the context here. Absolutely. For example, exemplar rather, use local fresh ingredients, good reputation of quality, competitive pricing strategy. Those are some big internal strengths, and you guys have decided some great internal strengths as well. What are some weaknesses that you all see? I like the money-back guarantee. That's nice. Yeah, adequate budget to market the product, Rosalie. That's a great one. That's something all small businesses really struggle with. Um, yeah, we know it's 10% higher in cost, like Matt and Steph said. Yep, and Darcy and Victoria. Good. Yep, Thomas is hitting on the shelf life being a hard thing. It is, because like if this food goes bad, what are we going to do, right? Um, yes, Beth Ann, this is just the strengths and weaknesses from your SWAT. So remember, your internal market factors are your strengths and weaknesses. We're going to get to your external market factors in just a moment. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Limited distribution. Yes. Yes. Perfect. So, yes, all of these are things that we're going to have to think about as we bring this product to market. What I think is also interesting is look at some of the weaknesses that we have identified with TipTop. It's a new product. It's outside the company's established reputation. 
maybe they're lacking staff to make a new product. It's kind of like what somebody said about, you know, well, we might not have the inadequate budget to market it. Rosalie said that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those are some things, some genuine weaknesses that we need to talk about. What's really important when you come back to those, and this gets us back over here. Don't forget this last question, which are the most important and why? So notice in the example exemplar, they don't just state these are our strengths, these are our weaknesses. They really delve into it. So two main internal factors that will affect the marketing strategy are the use of local fresh ingredients and the fact that we are launching a new product outside of our current offerings, right? Definitely a concern. Okay, to leverage our strengths though, we will ensure that messaging reinforces that the new to-go lunches will use local fresh ingredients similar to regular orders. If our strengths are used effectively, the risk of entering a new area for us will be mitigated. The product may be different, but the customer's experience will remain the same. So see how they tied together? They didn't just put, hey, here's strengths and here's just weaknesses. It says, hey, here's our strengths and here's how we're going to use those strengths to combat our weaknesses and overcome them. And this is just within the organization itself. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, Angelina asked a great question. Can we change our strengths from our original SWOT? Yes, and that's what we say about this being a really um, finely honed submission is feel free to use the, the feedback from your instructor. And if you're like, man, I could really identify a lot better strengths now in week seven than I could in week two of the course, do it. Feel free to do it. Um, this is your chance to really show that you figured that out. Yeah. Awesome, Matt. And are there any other questions on this? Yeah, Bailey, so that's normal to struggle in week two. I mean, that's, you know, you're just kind of getting your feet wet in this world. And now that you've had a chance to interact with SWAT pretty much, you know, in some capacity, at least every other week, um, looking at this slide now, you may approach it completely different than you did in week two. In fact, we kind of hope that you do because that's a sign that you've actually learned and grown from the course. And so that's what your instructor's looking for. Yeah. Other questions? I don't want to rush you guys through this. Yeah, Chris, a great question. Do we just pick one strength and one weakness? If we look at this example, notice that there's three strengths and two weaknesses. I think you need a minimum of two for both the strengths and the weaknesses, and ideally three to four to show you really um, understand the uh, topography of the marketplace. Yeah, so true, Carrie. That's a great way to put it. Yep, yep. Yes, Lisa, great question. Do we need to write a note for our very first slide? You do. Yep, every slide should have notes in it, for sure. Yep. Yes. Yes, you do not have to dissect each one of them. Melina made a great point. Yeah. Your title page, you do not need to um, include notes on. If you figure out a way to include notes on your title page, let me know, because I'd be very creative. <laughs> that one, you can, you don't have to include notes on. We're going to let you out of that one. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, Lisa. You're setting me straight. That's perfect. Uh, is the first bullet the weaknesses? You can make the first bullet the weaknesses, and then you can explain these as sub-bullets. If you don't feel comfortable using the boxes, you can do strengths, and then you can do weaknesses. And then you can have your subpoints in here. So a strength might, speaking of typos, goodness gracious. Okay, so one of your strengths might be, um, oh, what do we say some of our strengths were? Great local market, um, or great, you know what we could say actually, um, loyal employees. That would be a huge strength because we know that they're going to stick to it. Loyal and hardworking employees. Um, Remember, these are things that happen with inside your organization. These are not external factors yet. We're going to get to those. And then, like we said, some of the weaknesses might be, um, uh, oh, yeah, the marketing. Rosalie made a great point about marketing. So um, maybe a minimal marketing budget. That would be one that would be um, tough to think about, right? So, and then you can just go through and bullet point them from there. Does that make sense again? Okay, good, Matt. Good. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Then let's move on to slide number six. Just make sure you really address which are the most important and why and show how you're going to use those strengths to leverage or to um, 
combat those weaknesses. You don't just want to plunk your strengths and your weaknesses up there. You want to actually explain um, how you're going to address them. Let me go back and clean this up so you can see that. Uh, da -da -da. It might not let me do that. There we go. Let me just delete back up here. So yeah, make sure that you don't just plunk down your internal market factors, your strengths and your weaknesses, but that you remember to answer these questions down here too. And remember, make sure and use your notes section so you can really explain um, the meat and potatoes. And notice over here at the exemplar, that's exactly what happened. Um, the biggest weakness for the bakery is that the new product is very different from what it offers now. And then they really explain, but to overcome this, it will be imperative that it communicates the new product to its existing customer base first, right? Um, that's a big deal that we talk to the people we already know who are loyal. So we don't just identify the weakness up here. Um, we fully explain down in here how what we're going to do to combat it, and we hint on it up here under the bullet point. Does that make sense? So if we could, if it's almost like a triangle in our in, when we identify the weakness, we're at the peak. Then under our bullet point, we give a little more meat to that, and then down in our notes section, we fully flesh it out. Does that kind of help you make sense of how to put that slide together? Okay, good, good. No, Angelina, you're welcome to use to overcome this and identify that that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so Carissa, even though you're going to list a number of strengths and a number of weaknesses, you only need to pull out the most important down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they touch on a couple different ones down here, not just one. Um, they talk about fresh ingredients down here. They talk about using those local fresh ingredients again up in here. Um, let's see what else do we have. See how they're not just, it's not just answering one single aspect of the strengths. They're really trying to tie in. This is more critical thinking that happens down in here. So instead, where we just identify those strengths and identify those weaknesses up at the top, notice that down here we're tying in how we're going to use those strengths to come at those weaknesses. Um, and how we're going to leverage those strengths to overcome those obstacles. Does that make sense? Okay, good, Chris. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Okay, let's move on to our next slide. External market factors. So now that we've talked about internal factors, that's okay, Thomas. I thought that might be what it was. That's why I paused. Um, now that we've talked about internal market factors, let's talk about external market factors. So we've looked inside ourselves. We said, oh, what's the tough things that we're going to be facing? And what are our strengths as an organization? But what are our weaknesses as an organization when it comes to bringing this product to market? Now we're going to look outside and say, okay, once we push this product forward into the market, what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses that we're going to be seeing there? Um, and this is exactly like the last slide. You're going to talk about which are most important and what you need to be aware of, and you're going to tie these pieces together. In fact, let's go look at the exemplar for tip top. If I can get my mouse to come down there. There we go. So notice they use the boxes again, and you're welcome to copy and paste those boxes. Just make sure you change that content again. But they identified some pretty neat opportunities here. There's providing fresh and local food and providing fast and healthy lunch options, right? But they also have some threats. They've got some high competition in the to-go space and some changes in the neighborhood makeup. Um, that's kind of, oh, let me come back here. Sorry there, folks. Um, but yeah, they, it's not just opportunities that they have, but they also have threats. So how did they tie these together in the actual um, bullet points of the PowerPoint? They said, well, the two major external market for, for forces rather are the opportunity to offer a fast, healthy lunch alternative and the threat of high competition, right? Notice bullet point number two, and this is what I'm talking about when you tie them together. To leverage our strength of fast and healthy lunches, we need to ensure that messaging emphasizes this directing people to our Facebook page to see a daily list of to-go offerings will be key. It's a great way to work around that threat, right? Also, the threat of high competition in this space is a big challenge for us. We will need to use loyalty-based promotions to turn our customers, our breakfast customers, into lunch customers. So they didn't just identify the threats in that market in this example. They talked about how they were going to overcome some of the threats in the market. Um, and that's where that critical thinking piece comes in. We don't want you just to throw down the opportunities and throw down the threats, but we want you to really um, explain them and explain what you're, how you're going to leverage those opportunities and how you're going to address those threats. Uh, th those are both two very important points. So remember, this slide is about looking out into the marketplace. 
make sure you keep that separate. The last slide was about looking at you as an organization and where your strengths and weaknesses were. This is now about looking out into that marketplace. Does that make sense to everyone, how those two slides differ? I know that sometimes that gets a little muddy. Okay, good. Awesome. Yes. Okay, perfect. Great. And once again, like I said, you're welcome to take these. You can highlight these and copy them over. No points deducted um, for not doing so. No points added for doing so. If you find it's easier to use this formatting um, on your slides, you're just welcome to do so. Formatting only. All right, then let's get to our next slide. This is your needs and wants slide. So how will you leverage your target market's needs and wants in the marketing strategies you are suggesting? Utilizing the work you completed in your target market analysis, how does understanding your company's wants and needs help in developing a, market, a target marketing strategy? So let's talk about just bullet point number one here. How will you leverage your target market's needs and wants in the marketing strategy you are suggesting? Does anybody have any ideas on about that before we go to the example? Yeah, Tara Lee, great question. If you feel like there's too much information on a single slide, make sure and use your notes section. If you really feel like it's feeling crunched, the best thing to do is bop down to that notes section. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, back to this question. How will you leverage your target market's needs and wants in the marketing strategies you are suggesting? Anybody have any ideas before I take you over? Nobody is going to be brave and dip their toe in the pond tonight. <laughs> There we have a couple takers. Okay. I love it. Thank you, Chris and William, for being brave and Matt. I see we've got a bunch of people typing. We're going to think through this. Healthy food. Okay. That's a need and a want, really, for a lot of people. They want their pets to have healthy, healthy food. And it's also a need in the sense they want them to live longer. Organic products. Okay. Yeah, William. I took the words right out of your mouth. I didn't mean to. Hmm. Oh, Monika, hang in there. Okay, yes, let's take a look at what we did over here at Tip Top for this one. This I absolutely love. And so don't get worried about all the arrows and all the funkiness going on here. Um, you don't have to use this formatting again. The only reason why I like it is because it allows you to take some of these key ideas and tie them to needs and wants. Um, so like some marketing and messaging strategies that we've talked about, promoting a social responsibility program, providing custom seasonal menus, creating separate windows for to-go lunches. These are all incredible marketing and messaging strategies. And what's neat is you can tie them directly into a want and also into a need. So let's just take, for example, providing custom seasonal menus. It meets both a want and that you're supporting a local business. It also meets a need by providing healthy food alternatives. So if you want to take these arrows and boxes and use this format, you're welcome to do so. Once again, you're under no obligation to do so. The key here is that you are somehow showing in your way how the wants and needs tie back into the messaging strategies that you identified up above. Does that make sense to everyone? Great question, Carrie. I would identify the wants. So I would come back over here and actually I would identify what the needs are and how they tie back into the messaging strategies and then I would do a bullet for wants and how those tie back into strategies. Mm -hmm. And then you are welcome to start doing sub points here. Does that help explain? Awesome. Yeah, and once again, it's really your instructors are not specifically looking for the format used in the exemplar, which I'm so thankful for. Because um, some of you will be like, oh, yeah, that's great. I can totally use that type of formatting and I can use those boxes. Um, but you are under no obligation to do so. You can absolutely do this in bullet points and in sentences down in your notes section. And as long as you're explaining your ideas, that's really what your instructor is looking for. Yep. Yeah, Thomas, you're welcome to use the formatting. I just can't caution you all strongly enough. Do not take the information in the slides of the example. <laughs> so don't take the text <laughs> because that is plagiarism. But you're welcome to take the formatting. So for instance, if you wanted to come over here, and I'm going to actually highlight a couple of these. If you hold down your control button, which is really cool, you can highlight more than one box at one time. I'm going to take some arrows. 
And I'm going to take this right here. And I'm going to copy that with a control C. I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to slide this off to the side if it'll let me. Yeah, so I can keep it there. And then I'm going to go over to my PowerPoint and actually just paste that in. Then I can go in and I can say, okay, what are some of the messaging strategies we've talked about? What are some of the ones we've talked about? And what are some of the needs we've talked about? And I can actually fill that in with my information. Does that kind of help everyone? Awesome. Yeah, total time saver, William. I'm with you on that. Yep. And you can move the arrows. Yeah, you absolutely can. Arrows are completely movable, and you can even switch directions on them. You just grab the end of them. You can swing them all around. Do the hokey pokey. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Yeah, or you can use the bullet points, Thomas, and that's a great point, too. Um, you're welcome to use the bullet points for sure. You're under no obligation to use this formatting, and that's how come I left the bullet points over here. You are absolutely welcome to put in needs at once. Either way, let me make sure that you understand, again, you need to include a note section. So going back to our exemplar, if you use the super razzle-dazzle formatting, um, which is fine, you still need to use the note section down here. If you use the um, more bullet point formatting over here, still make sure you use the notes section. Remember that notes section, no matter how you present up here on your slide, this is where you really explain your thoughts and show your instructor you know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, Melora, you can use fades, you can use all sorts, whatever you want to do. Um, you go right ahead. You're under no obligation to do so. You don't get bonus points for doing so, but your instructors. I'm not going to lie, they see a lot of these. I think they sometimes enjoy that, um, even though they can't award more points for them or more points for it. It's fun for them to see it. I, speaking from personal experience, it's fun when you see a PowerPoint come through like that. Okay, any other questions on slide number seven? Good, okay. And on to slide number eight target market expansion slide. So this is kind of a new slide. Um, so I really want you to think back um, or think forward into expanding even beyond what we just talked about when we were talking about your SWOT, your external factors. We're going to take that even one step further and talk about target market expansion. So the question here, how can you expand your target market to reach more people in the marketing strategies you are suggesting? Provide examples utilizing the work you completed in your target market analysis to support your ideas. This is really important. This first PowerPoint, or this first bullet point rather, is talking about not only are you presenting to your shareholders now how you're going to bring this product to market right now, but how you're going to grow it even beyond once you bring it to market now. So this shows that you're really two steps ahead on this. Does that make sense to everyone? We'll go look at the exemplar, but I want to make sure that general concept makes sense. So like for Tip Top Bakery, our primary target market is the working white collar professionals. They work in neighborhoods where we are located and have the income and need for our products. The second market we plan to, um, plan to market the to-go lunches to are college students. So how do they explain that? Well, there's several major universities um, in the area. There's also college students that are often focused on quick, healthy alternatives. So from a sandwich point, this is a great idea of how to think about another market that you could target to once you once they get their sandwiches to market with their current market. So in thinking through that, what are some um, potential future markets, we could say, of this product for Snoo Pet Supply? Anybody have some ideas of what could be some other markets? How else could they use this product to reach new markets? Because, you know, it's great to stick with our existing demographic, and it's good to have, you know, one target demographic, but our goal is to take over, right, as the natural pet food of choice. So how do we do that? Yeah, Melora, great idea, like boutiques and vets. Working with vets might be a great one. Oh, yeah, did you see Chloe go by in the background? Yeah, she's floating around with my husband. Um, yes, major retailers might be one, carry With the 10% price hike, I'm not sure that major retailers might be the best, only because I'm not sure the average person in the retail store would want to pay the 10% more. But that's something to think through. Um, dogs and cat shows, those are people that really care about their pets, right? That's a, probably a pretty good demographic. People who take their pets to the vet and can afford it, probably a pretty good demographic. Um, yes. 
<laughs> Gary, I have ideas. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, even sponsor the dog and cat shows. That's a great idea, Chris. Uh, those, so those are all things that those are all potential target markets that you could expand into once you get this product to your initial target market. Um, so great ideas by you guys. Notice that there's a second point to this, and I really want to hit on that. Provide examples utilizing the work you've completed in your target market analysis to support your ideas. Notice in the exemplar they talk about in order to reach a second market, we plan to work with the universities to offer coupons and discounts to students and employees with university IDs. Awesome. So taking the example of dog and cat shows like Jan and Carissa talked about, there's a great opportunity here to say, hey, um, let me go back over here. Um, that yes, as a sponsor of this, we are going, anyone who comes to the dog and cat show and buys our product at the dog and cat show, we'll give them 10% off, right? Um, yeah, yep, that would totally work. You don't have to break it down to the full prism element. Um, you don't have to speak to the geographic demo and psychographic, but you definitely want to, you don't just want to pick a market and just throw it out there and say, like if we were just to say vets, um, okay, yes, we understand vets might be a good idea, but explain to us why you think vets are a good idea. Um, kind of like what I just did. And that's what come once again, that's why we always say there's no right or wrong with this. It's just about making sure that you're actually explaining and supporting your ideas that you present. Yeah, does that help explain to everyone? Yeah, totally, Carrie. And that's a great substantiation and thought process. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like no right or wrong answer, right? As long as you can make sense of why you're explaining what you are based on what's been provided to you in the course. Awesome. Okay. And then make sure if you need to cite your sources, you can do it in the notes section or you can do it um, at the end. You just right click on that last slide and hit duplicate slide. And then you're going to hit sources cited. And then you can cite your sources here. Um, you may not have a lot of sources. That's totally okay. Um, but in case you need to, that's where you need to go. So real quick, because we're running out of time. Where has all our time gone on this project? We've had way too much fun tonight, y'all. A um, couple of different things. Make sure that you double check and treasure hunt the rubric. Um, if you go back to your learning module, you hit assignment guidelines and rubrics. Hopefully this isn't breaking news to anyone. Um, you want to go under final project two. And right here where it says, FP part two document, and if you download that, that's gonna give you your rubric for this assignment. Yep, and that's what you wanna see right there. That is, that is really, really important. That is going to provide you with everything that you need to have in order to earn the maximum number of points for this assignment. So I really strongly encourage you, if you haven't treasure hunted your rubric, to do so. Basically what this means is you take and you look at each area. So social responsibility, in order to meet that, you're gonna to need to meet the proficient criteria. Sorry, there's a little person with me at the moment. Um, meet the proficient criteria and then discuss additional ways to make the marketing um, socially responsible. So just make sure that you're looking through your entire PowerPoint to make sure you have met all the requirements. I'm so sorry. Oh, we have a very unhappy little person. You've met all the requirements. Hang on one second. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. We're going to give her just a sec. There we go. There we go. Okay. There you go. Okay, there we are. <laughs> now we're all back. Hopefully we're all back. We'll give it just a sec and see. Okay, there we go. She just needs a minute. Okay. Okay. Or not. <laughs> I may have to give her back. Um, but just make sure that you meet all the requirements for exemplary. And that way, if you go through and you double check your PowerPoint against each part of this rubric, it's going to make it so much easier if your instructor does deduct points for you to go back in and explain, well, okay, can you take a second look? Because I did X, Y, and Z, and I really feel that I met this. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, Melora, it's the baby. Yeah, it's so helpful to treasure hunt, right, Bethann? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And has anybody, when you've been treasure hunting on your past assignments, has anybody found areas where you're like, oh, I thought I totally answered that, and I totally didn't, and you're so glad that you went back in and double-checked it? Yes. Perfect. Good. Thank you, Melina, for popping that in the chat. Yes. Awesome. Okay, perfect.
Now, if we want to save our PowerPoint as a PDF, all we're going to do is I'm going to show you because I promised you I would show you this too, because this is how you're going to have to submit it to the Writing Center as a PDF. Um, otherwise, the Writing Center cannot review your work and they really can't review your notes section. And that's a bummer because you've done all this work on, on your assignment. You're just going to go under File, Save As, and I'm going to choose, we'll go up there. Um, I'm going to choose Save as a PDF. There we go. More options. Da, 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 da. It's not, why is it not doing it? There we go. It should be saving that. Let's see what it ends up doing here. It should pop it up. Yeah, and mine's not saving it as notes. I'm not quite sure why it's not doing that. So we're going to hit Save As. Uh -huh. More options. There should be a button here to choose notes. Uh -huh. We're going to save as a PDF. Let's see if it grabs, there it is. There's the options button you want, right there. And then, yes, that's exactly what you want. Hang on, let me hand this little person off. And then you want to publish what? You want to actually publish the, there we go. You want to go ahead and publish the notes pages too. Does everyone see how we got that? Okay, and then save it there under your OneDrive. Yeah, that's the key is that you hit the Options button. Once you drop down, first make sure you drop down to PDF and then hit Options, and then you can choose once you do the PDF. That's the key to getting that note section in there. Awesome. Okay, everyone's got that. Very cool. And then the last thing you just need to do is submit it to the Writing Center. Um, and the, Has everyone used the Writing Center hopefully by now at least once? I'm hoping. Yay, Steph. Okay, good. Emily, yes. Carissa, yes. Great, great, great. You haven't yet. Okay. Yeah, she totally knows what time the webinar is, Carrie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. If for any reason you haven't used it, I'm going to bop you back over here. All you're going to do is go under Course Tools, and then you're going to hit Submit Your Paper for Written Feedback and Support. The key thing about this, and this will just take you right through the prompts, um, just make sure you follow them. The key thing is that you need to allow them 48 hours to review assignments. I will give you a huge cautionary notice on this. If you have used the Writing Center in the past and say you've submitted on Saturday morning, but you still got your assignment back on Sunday and it was okay, don't take that gamble now. The reason why is the Writing Center, the further along we go in the course, the more slammed they become because they don't just service our course, they service all of us in HU. So as you're reaching the end of your term, so is absolutely everyone else in the university. And so people tend to submit more to the Writing Center at the end of the course we have found, um, mostly because they care more about their grades. They want to make sure they get every last point, which we admire and encourage. Um, but just make sure you give that Writing Center the full 48 hours notice um, that they need, which means you need to get this in on Friday for sure. And if you've been following along in the learning community, we've given you enough time to make sure that you get to um, that deadline on time if you've been doing the daily bite-sized tasks. Um, any other questions? Yeah, if you're confident in your presentation, William, absolutely. You don't have to leave them alone. No, don't leave them alone, William. They love to be bothered. That's what they're there for. <laughs> they want to make sure you have the best project possible. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Steph, this is our last webinar. I can't believe it. And we're going over by about five minutes, which I apologize for. But I really want to make sure you guys have everything you need to succeed. And I know Melina feels the exact same way. So, um, yes, you're welcome to cite the Pearson Text Path Ann. For sure. Any other questions? I want to make sure we get them all. It's our pleasure. Oh, we really enjoyed this. Thank you for the sweet words, Melora. Yeah, Melina and I, like, we actually really enjoy doing these, and maybe because we're really nerdy and we really enjoy geeking out on this, but we do. And we know it's a big um, commitment from you guys, too, to be here every Wednesday night uh, for an hour. So we really appreciate you making the time. We don't take that for granted, and hopefully we've used your time wisely. Hopefully it's helped your grade more than anything, and you're walking out of here. Um, feeling more empowered. I really, it's really our pleasure and our privilege to do this. Just as a quick question, I've always wanted to ask this. Has anybody decided to change their major to marketing based on this class? Bailey, nope. <laughs> Anthony's excited. Okay. Not yet. Okay, good. So we had some people switch over maybe to some business stuff. No, but you love the class. That's what it's all about. 
Yeah. Okay, Angelina, maybe it's a minor. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. I just always have to, I'm like, maybe we lured a few into marketing. I always hope we do. Um, eyes wide open, Thomas. That's a great way to put it. Well, thank you all so much for your time. Finish strong. Get those final projects in. We know you can. And know that if you have any questions, don't hesitate to come over to the learning community. I'll still be hanging out there right up to the bitter end of your course. So um, as we, I know, squeak into the holidays and whatever else, you can lose track of time. But please come over there. Ask any questions you need to. Stay on top of your assignments. And we wish you all the best. So here's um, a big goodbye from Melina and I. We always hate sending you off. We really do. We feel like we know you guys really well. And, and we hate to say goodbye. But goodbye for now. Best of luck. And um, let us know if you have any questions in the learning community. Take care and have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.